cute lazy vegan today's video I thought I would just sit down and go through some of the Asian vegan ingredients that I have in the kitchen at the moment. Ingredients that I generally like to use on a regular basis to make Asian food, you know. Asian cuisine seems to be the popular thing right now. There's more and more Asian cuisine that I see in the vegan world and I think people are very interested. I think, hopefully. Anyways, yeah, I just have a bunch of ingredients here in front of me so I thought I would just show you guys everything I have. My dogs just escaped. <laughs> I thought I'd just show you guys some of the things I use regularly and what you can use them for. Many of them are going to be Korean because you guys know I'm Korean so naturally we have more Korean stuff. But I still have some other things from other countries as well. So hopefully you guys find this helpful um, or interesting. And if I miss anything, if there's something that you guys use regularly that you think everyone should have in their kitchen if they enjoy Asian cuisine, then leave it down below. Let me know down below what are some of your Asian vegan... My dog is just coughing up a storm. Let me know down below what are some of your Asian vegan ingredients, things that you use regularly, and let's get started. Let's go. So let's get one thing out of the way. Soy sauce, obviously, you guys, I mean, I don't think I need to explain, but I think if you are gluten-free, you can use tamari, although I'm not, like, certain on the tamari thing. I've never tried tamari, but yeah, soy sauce. Everyone should have soy sauce in their kitchen, no matter what. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the Korean ingredients first, because I think... I don't know. That's what I have most of. Okay. First thing is this. This is gochujang. Gochujang. You've heard me talk about this multiple times before. There we go. This is like the biggest tub. And this is basically red pepper paste. So this is essential to Korean cuisine. If you know anything about Korean cooking or Korean food, then you've probably heard of gochujang. So usually it comes in some sort of a tub like this, like different sizes, but they're basically all in this style. And you can easily find this in grocery stores, Asian supermarkets, like wherever. Um, well, I say easily, but I guess it depends on where you live. But if you go to an Asian supermarket or Asian grocery store, you're probably going to be able to find this. Now, this is used for so many different things in Korean cooking. If you guys have had bibimbap, have you had bibimbap? It's like... A Korean dish and the literal translation is mixed rice so basically you take rice a bunch of vegetables cooked in different ways and then usually in, in non-vegan world they add an egg into it and then you add like a spoonful of this stuff and then you mix it all well together and it becomes this delicious concoction and um, that is the main thing so gochujang is what you use for bibimbap and also a million other things you can use this in soups you can just put like a little bit of gochujang into like whatever soup to flavor it. You can use it to flavor different type of sauces. You can make so many different things with gochujang. So highly recommend this if you like Korean food, if you like spicy food, if you like flavorful food. It's really good. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like inside. I mean it is just... oh god. Oh god. So that is like a thick red paste. And it's delicious. Mm, it's very strong in flavor um, and it can be a bit spicy, but it's not that spicy, but then that's just coming from me, so I don't know. It's It depends on the brand as well, how spicy it is. Just use a little bit if you can't handle the spice, you know. So the next thing is another like must-have in Korean cooking, which is gochukaru. So gochukaru is, if you notice, gochu, that's called gochujang, this is called gochukaru. Gochu is basically like pep like red peppers in Korean. So this is red pepper powder or red pepper flakes and this is basically another must have. So this again you use in various different dishes. This is what you need to use um, when you make kimchi and you can put this in different types of stew stoops, <laughs> stews or soups and just you know a lot of other things. Uh, we use this when we make all sorts of side dishes. Just everything. We just like to put a little bit of th this in everything. So it's red pepper powder, red pepper flakes, red like chili flakes. Like I don't even know exactly what the translation is because this one says red pepper powder, but I've been calling it chili pepper flakes. I don't know. But basically it looks something like this and this is the Korean terminology there. And yeah, it is spicy. This is probably more spicy than... Gochujang. Gochujang has more flavor, I would say, and it's like 
thick and it's like a paste so it's very different but you can use it for similar things sometimes you can interchange interchange for example if a recipe calls for some kochukaru sometimes you can use kochuja okay in some cases but not always yeah, another must-have in Korean cuisine. Okay. I'm not very good at explaining, am I? God damn. Oh, here's another different brand of gochujang or gochukaru. This is another thing of gochukaru. So the next thing, I love this thing so much. This is pure sesame oil. So that right here. Now, I think this is a Japanese brand, actually. But it's the same thing. Let's see. Yeah, product of Japan. But Korean people, we love this stuff. We use sesame oil on everything. For Korean cooking, I swear, you just need gochujang, gochukaru, sesame oil, and just like a few other things. And then you probably can make like almost every Korean dish. <laughs> if you haven't tried it, oh, it's so good. I can't describe it. it. It's like this type of flavor that I can't describe. It's very, just, it tastes... It smells like roasted, like toasted, just very comforting. Oh, I don't know. If I can pick one oil to consume for the rest of my life, it would definitely be sesame oil. Like, I'm sorry olive oil, I'm sorry coconut oil, but you guys, bye Felicia. This, this is what you need in your life. I can't even describe like how we use this. We literally can just put this on everything. Like even in bibimbap, like I told you, after you mix it all together, just add a little bit of sesame oil at the very end, just mix it together and it just tastes so good. When I was really young, I used to even just do soy sauce, sesame oil, rice, and just mix that up together. And that was so good to me. But yeah, you just add this kind of at the end of whatever dishes. Like this isn't really what you use. Like you don't really use this in the same way that you would use like other cooking oils. This isn't really a cooking oil. Like you generally want to kind of add this to add flavor at the very end. Like it's not really used to like fry up stuff. In the beginning you might want to use a different type of oil to cook something and then in the end you want to add a bit of this and it just adds like a burst of flavor and deliciousness and a little goes a really long way with this stuff. Like you have one of these and it will last you a very long time and oh my god. Oh. Any type of Asian cooking, Korean cooking, if you add this it just just, it's like that beautiful cherry on top of the cake. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so the next thing is another sesame thing. So this is sesame seeds. These are roasted sesame seeds. I don't know what brand this is, but yeah. So once again, we Koreans, we like our sesame, apparently. We add this on top of whatever dishes. I just sprinkle it on top of everything at the very end, and it just has that very... There's, I don't know what word in English, there is no word in English to describe it, but in Korean, it's called kosohe. Kosohe. That just means like, it's like nutty or like really, it just has that sesame taste. It's like a way to describe the sesame taste, but I don't know. There's no translation, so I'm sorry about that. I don't know why I just went off on that. But anyways, you just put this on top of whatever, like your final dish, you can put this on top of fried rice, you can put this on top of you know, tofu, you can put this, like, just put it anywhere, anywhere you want. And it just adds that extra element of goodness. And it's so good. So good. All right, we're moving on now. So this is rice vinegar. So this is good for Korean, Japanese cooking, or any type of Asian cooking, really, to be honest. Um, if you like sushi, this is a must-have for your sushi rice. So you can make, you can put a little bit of this, a little bit of sugar, uh, mix that together and then pour it into your sushi rice and then that makes like basically sushi rice So or you don't even have to have sugar if you if you don't want to but rice vinegar really good You can use it for even like Dressings like any type of Asian style dressings you can add it for yeah It's very versatile having one of these is pretty handy once again if you like sushi you can always Always have this around sometimes if you're lazy right if you just want to make like a sushi bowl Just take some rice pour a little bit of this in there and then like mix it together, add a few like, I don't know, sushi ingredients like avocado, maybe, you know, tear some seaweed in there and then you have a sushi bowl and it has that sushi taste because of this rice vinegar. Really, really, really essential. So I forgot to mention this when I was talking about Korean cuisine because this is what we use quite often. And this is tashima. So this is basically dried up seaweed. I think they call it kombu, dry kombu, I don't know. 
It's like dried wakame, dried seaweed. It looks something like this. I think you can get this in Asian supermarkets easily, but they basically just look like dried up seaweed because that's what it is. So Korean people, we use this like all the freaking time and generally Asian cuisine, we like our seafood. Like we like our sea taste. So a lot of Korean stews and soups contain like some sort of a fish stock. Um, generally, they use a lot of anchovies, those poor anchovies. But anyways, but instead of anchovies, you can use some of these. This is, um, yeah, dried kelp. So dried kelp, dried seaweed, whatever you want to call it, it's basically all kind of the same thing, I think, just in different forms. But essentially, what you want to do is just add a few pieces of this like into some a pot of water and then just let that come to a boil and just kind of let it simmer for like i don't know 20 30 minutes and then it should flavor that water into like a really nice kelpy taste and then you can use that to make like a seafoody like broth so yeah definitely recommend getting yourself some of that but if you can't find this or if you don't if you're lazy or whatever then I recently discovered this gem right here. This is pure kelp powder. Oh my god. Guys, this is like a life changer. So this is basically the powder form of this. So I found this on iHerb.com. If you are new to iHerb.com, you can get yourself 10% off your first order. Just use the code either down below or in this uh, screen right here. But anyways, this is, yeah, it's actually not even that expensive. I think this was maybe ten dollars but maybe not even ten dollars i don't know but anyways it's a relatively big bottle and the reason why i say it's a big bottle because this stuff is so concentrated oh god damn it smells like see it smells like the ocean in here okay it's so concentrated that you only need just a tiny little amount to like flavor a pretty big amount of broth so i use this when i am too lazy to do this you know um actually i use this like so much more now that i have this because it's so convenient and instead of like making the broth and like waiting for this to like infuse the water i just put a little bit of this in there and it just skips that entire step so it's so awesome i'm so happy i found this and it's really good for you of course it says supports healthy Ooh. it says it supports healthy thyroid function very important and rich in natural iodine don't know what any of that means, but I think it's good for you, okay? So yeah, let me actually read this for you. Kelp is a large leafy seaweed belonging to the brown algae family that grows in forests in the colder waters of the world's oceans. Kelp has been used for centuries as an important nutritious staple ingredient in Chinese, Japanese, and Korean cuisines. Yes. There you go, there you have it folks. So if you can get your hands on this from iHerb, it's really, really handy. Once again, you don't even need to get this to be honest, if you have this, because then you can just use this for basically what you can use that for, you know what I mean? Okay, so yeah, definitely recommend this if you wanna make anything kinda taste fishy and give it that really nice like seaweed flavor this stuff okay so another korean thing that i totally forgot to talk about which is actually quite important it's actually like one of the most important things this is twinjang now twinjang is fermented soybean paste now you guys are like what the fuck is that let me show you what it looks like god damn this is gonna stink oh god damn oh god, oh god. so it kind of looks like poo <laughs> but um this stuff is actually really healthy for you. We, Koreans have been eating this for like thousands of years, okay? We swear by this stuff. Now this is, this is all in Korean, but basically, um, I don't know if they all look like this, but it kind of looks like, the packaging should be brown. You know, Korean people are we're pretty practical, you know? The gochujang packaging will be in red, you know? And then the, the twinjang packaging will probably be in brown. Um, because, you know, that's the color of it. Twinjang jjigae is twinjang stew, because jjigae means stew in Korean, and twinjang kuk is twinjang soup, because kuk is soup. There you go. There's your Korean lesson for the day. But basically, you use this to make some sort of a soup or a stew. And twinjang jjigae is one of the most traditional Korean dishes that you could get, and it is one of my personal favorite comfort foods Every time I miss Korean food, that is what I crave like usually the most, which is twin jang jjigae. And it's very good for you. I have videos on how to make the soup. So if you guys want to check that out, um, I'll leave the link down below. 
Oh yeah, for all of these ingredients, if I have any videos where I'm using these ingredients, I'll leave those video videos down below. So you just put a bit of this, like a few spoonfuls of this, depending on how much water you're using, into like some water, like some boiling water, add some veggies in there, add some tofu in there, put some of this, uh, where is that thing? Put some of this kelp powder in there, and there you have some tuinjang jjigae, tuinjang guk, all of that stuff. Really, really good for you, and oh, it's so good. This, this is a must-have if you are a Korean, if you like Korean food, tuinjang is must-have, must-have. To some non-Korean stuff. Okay, so this is actually a little bit somewhat similar to tuinjang, but not really. So this is miso. So now when people ask me what tuinjang is, I usually compare it to miso. I say it's a much stronger uh, version of miso. Very much stronger. So it's a bit similar in the sense that this contains soybeans. So it's all made of like soy. Um, like this is also soybean paste. So miso is like soybean paste, but it's a lot more mild than, tu than tuinjang. Like if I smell this, yeah, like the smell is just kind of like, ah, okay, it's pleasant. Like this stuff is like pungent. You know what I'm saying? Mild sodium miso. Now miso is just so convenient. Um, again, you make miso soup so easily with this stuff. You just add a little bit of this. You can also make all sorts of things. Like you can add this to flavor random things. Like you can even flavor like a pasta sauce with a little bit of miso because it's quite salty and has a lot of flavor. So you can just use this for all sorts of things. Um, you can, you know, mix this up with a bunch of other things to make like a dressing or make like, yeah, make like some sort of a pasta sauce or you can put this in random soups. It doesn't even have to be miso soup. I mean, the options are endless, my friends. Miso is kind of really good to have around. Moving on. Clearly most of what I have is Korean because I think I'm almost done this. Okay, so the next thing I have is a, is not Korean or Japanese. This is hoisin sauce. What country does this come from? Well, this is a product of the USA. <laughs> but I think this is like a Chinese sauce. Yeah, it says it's a classic Chinese sauce. Hoisin sauce. Mm hmm Now this is vegan. Now, at first I didn't think this was vegan, but this is vegan. Maybe it depends on the kind. Sugar, water, soybeans, salt, sweet potato, modified cornstarch, sesame seeds, garlic, wheat flour, chili pepper, spices, acidic acid, color, potassium sorbate. So that's vegan, right? Okay. This stuff is like, a, let's see what they describe it as. A classic Chinese sauce used in Peking duck, <laughs> barbecue, and mooshu pork. Well, you won't be eating any of that stuff. This palatable sweet sauce is great as a dip and for cooking meat, vegetables, or noodles. So literally you just put this into like whatever you want to and then it just becomes like a really delicious dish. It's, it is sweet like they described. It's dark, it's sweet. Let me smell this. Mmm, it's, oh, yes. It's so good. Um, with noodles, I think it's great. You can put it with veggies. Like, it's just nice to have, once again. If you crave that Chinese flavor, <laughs> then uh, good to have this. Yes. To be honest, I'm sure I have more things, but these are the last two things that I have here. This is a good starting point, I think. Otherwise, this video is just gonna get way too long, you know? So the next thing are Thai curry paste. So this is green curry paste. And this one is red curry paste. Okay, so now for these curry paste, you do have to be careful. Make sure you check the back to make sure that it is vegan because sometimes there's fish ingredients in them. So just make sure you check the back. These ones happen to be vegan as far as I can see unless, I mean, yeah, it's vegan, okay? So if you can find these, these are vegan. What brand is this? I don't know what brand this is. It, it, it's called Cock Brand. Great. Come on. So yeah, like I said, make sure you check the back for the ingredients because they're not always vegan. <laughs> Sometimes you learn that the hard way, so make sure you check the back. And basically, I mean, I'm not a freaking master in Thai cuisine because obviously I'm not Thai. But this stuff, if you have this, you can make yourself some beautiful curry. I mean, you literally just have to add like this, add some coconut milk, which I have right here, a can of coconut milk. You can use light coconut milk if you want. And then you just like put the put a, put a bit of this together and add some veggies and maybe some other things and then you have yourself a nice 
green curry or a red curry, Thai style curry, and it's delicious and amazing and so easy to make. And I've done different things with it, you know, like you can be creative, you know, there's no rules, okay? I once made a delicious green curry pasta with a little bit of this, some tofu, just mix it together with some spices and some salt and all that stuff, and then it becomes like a really lovely creamy sauce. So that video, again, I'll leave that link down below if you guys are interested. But yeah, you don't have to like be confined to the rules. You can do anything you want with these ingredients and just have a little fun. But it's really nice to have these pastes around because, you know, I love Thai food, I love curry. It's nice to be able to easily make curries like at home. So yeah, I think that's it guys. Okay, let me just put this away. Well, I think that is it for now. I hope I was helpful or somewhat resourceful. I have no idea. I literally just went through some things I had and yeah, it probably wasn't the most informative video, but that is just kind of a little run through of some of the Asian and vegan friendly items that you could get if you like Asian cuisine. So if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up as always. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. And oh yeah, make sure if you subscribe click that little bell button next to the subscribe button after you click subscribe there should be a little bell button and then you can get notifications bell button and then select be notified of this channel or something like that because apparently there's some issue going on on YouTube where people are not getting the videos that they want to be getting I don't really know what it is but if you want to be notified of my future videos then make sure you click that button and make sure you uh, share this video to anyone that likes Asian food too and uh, I'll see you guys in my next video Alright guys, bye bye!